introductory paragraphs. Well, they involve an attention getter and your thesis. That'll be for all the essays this year, save for the personal narrative, which we're going to write one more of if, if we're lucky. All right? So I got to come up with an attention getter, and I got to get people interested in the fact that Mary is brave. So let's do this. Do you have a lot of experience with brave people? Too soon a woman will certainly sound familiar. There's my attention gap. Now I can use my fold. So, rewriting thesis. I'm just going to rewrite my thesis. Mary is brave, that's my opinion. Because she stood up the pa What else did she do? I'll look here. Ate a possibly poisonous mushroom. right here. That is all the attention getter. This underlying portion here is the opinion and these three reasons make it a thesis. One reason, she stood up the paw. Second reason, she had a possibly poisonous mushroom. And third reason, she went into the woods alone. We know to look for the horse. I'm going to give you one example of a body paragraph and a conclusion. And you should be good to go after that. And I'll show you how it breaks down in a moment. So you start with your topic sentence, right? Based on your thesis, you start with the topic sentence. So, Mary is brave because she stood up the pot. That's the one example body paragraph, but you have to come up with one, two, three. All right, the topic sentence will lead off every time. Here's your one example. All right, so topic sentence. You indent Mary is brave because she is the lighting all right stood up to pop all right that is my topic sentence now i got to provide the context which i already have in my pre-writing so let's see, the family ran out of food. So, the narrator's family ran out of food. What's the next point in my foldable? So they decided to travel to find work. They Decide to travel to find work. They meet Mary. They meet Mary. And then the last piece of my context is they don't want her to come along because they're out of food and money, right? So I'll just write that. Pa does 
not want her to come along because they have a skimpy vocab word amount of food and money. So I've got my context that goes right up to this quote. That context is going to lead up to this quote that I've already chosen ahead of time. So, she stood up to pile with no fear in her voice. I'm going to write that now. She stood up to pa with no fear in her voice. End quote, Johnson, page 170. Now, I gotta bust out my second foldable now. I gotta provide an explanation one. Well, that's what comes over here, and that's just putting that quotation there in your own words. And I've already got it done on my foldable. I just got to rewrite. So Mary decided to stand up to Pa, even though she did not know him. I just plug it in right there after the quote. Oh, my God. Mary decided to stand up to Pa even though she did not know him. Now, explanation two, the most important part. That is the very last super duper important part before we restate our topic sentence. So, why is that brave? Let's explain it now. Mary does not know Pa. He could be a violent person, and she's coming from an abusive situation. I'm going to make a quick executive decision here and move this information up. So, Mary is coming from a violent and abusive situation. She has every right to be soft-spoken. Instead, She stands up, go get him, Mary, to a complete stranger. This action must have taken a lot a lot is two words, of personal bravery. So, guess what? All I have to do now is restate my topic sentence, which is right on the front of this bad boy right here. Mary is brave. This is all the same paragraph. There's my opinion. Because she stood up to Pa. That is a body paragraph. Topic sentence, opinion plus one reason. Opinion, and she stood up to Pa. There's one reason, period. Then the context. The narrator's family ran out of food. They decided to travel to find work. They meet Mary. Pa does not want her to come along because they have a skimpy, ring-a-ding-ding -ding amount of food and money. 
Quote, she stood up to Pa with no fear in her voice. She insists on coming along. So, Mary decided to stand up to Pa even though she did not know him. Next, Mary is coming from a violent situation, has every right to be soft-spoken. Instead, she stands up to a complete stranger. This action must have taken a lot of personal bravery. Restate the sentence, Mary is brave because she stood up to Pa. Then, let's say I did this three times in a row. She stood up to Pa. I just wrote that whole paragraph, right? She went out in the woods to look for the um, horse alone. Let's say I wrote that whole body paragraph, just like this last one I gave you an example of. And then finally, she ate a possibly poisonous mushroom. Why? Right? Let's say I did all of those three body paragraphs in my introductory paragraph, which I showed you. Then I can work on my concluding paragraph. Well, what do you do for the concluding paragraph? All you got to do for that bad boy, for that sucker, is rewrite your thesis. You restate your thesis. Now, it's late, so I'm actually not going to be creative about it. I'm just simply going to restate it. So, I'm going to indent Mary's brave, the same opinion, and the same three reasons. Because she stood up the paw. She went out in the woods alone. And finally, ate a possibly poisonous mushroom. Then I have to come up with a closing attention getter. So, I'm just going to address my original attention getter, which was a question, are you familiar with bravery? Mary reminds us all that bravery has a real Let us all hope we are willing to pay her price. Maybe a dark note to end it on, but the note I choose as a wonderful writer to end it on. All right, so you got this. You got that. You use both foldables, as I showed you, to write a body paragraph. That's what these concentrate on the most. But since the thesis is part of the intro and conclusion, you can use this for that as well. All right. Thanks for your time. Happy essay writing. All right. Thanks, Robert.